وسلم عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته to Mawlana and to the participants وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome to tonight's session and like I said any delays I hand over to to Mawlana تفضل شيخ جزاك الله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم صدق الله العظيم صلى الله على النبي الأمي وآله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة وسلام عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم My respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our cherisher and our sustainer, and choices of durood and salam be upon his beloved, our master, arwahuna fida Sayyidina Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, we will be looking at presenting ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially seeing that we are in the month of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the blessed month of Sha'ban and the month in which we find the night of absolution, the night of forgiveness, the night in which Allah subhanahu ta'ala reveals his special revelation upon the first heaven and calls out, is there anyone who seeks forgiveness that he may be forgiven? Is there anyone who seeks sustenance that I may grant him sustenance? And is there anyone who seeks relief from his problems so that I may grant him relief from his problems? And today, inshallah, I just want to focus on the first uh, aspect of this, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out, is there anyone who seeks forgiveness so that I may forgive him? Just for us to understand, how should we be presenting ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And for us to also think about and open our minds to, you know, constantly presenting ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also reminding ourselves of how we will be presenting ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So there's many dimensions to this topic, but inshallah, I will just try and focus on, due to time constraints, on just this one dimension, just for us to open up our thinking to this aspect. The first thing is that when we look at the hadith referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing a special revelation on the first heaven and calling out, is there anyone who seeks forgiveness so that I may forgive him? This should in, induce some sort of thinking in ourselves and make us realize that this is our Rabb that is calling out to us. We are the bondsmen, we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are the ones who are supposed to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones that are supposed to be constantly turning to him, constantly seeking his forgiveness. And yet we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is so infinite that even though he is not required or he does not need to call out to his servants, but this is how vast, this is how infinite his mercy is, that he is calling out to us, he is inviting us towards his mercy. We shouldn't be needing an invitation to his mercy. We should be taking advantage of his mercy with every opportunity we can get. But this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even though we engross ourselves day and night in sins, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to us. And especially on this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy comes into a josh and he calls out to us, is there anyone who seeks forgiveness so that I may forgive him? And even when we look at the Holy Quran, remember this is just on, on, on the specific night um, that uh, the Hadith has mentioned with regard to the significance, significance of Shabi Barat. But even when we look at the Holy Quran, we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy invites us towards Him. And in Surah 82, verse number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the verse that I decided, Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O insan, O man, what has deceived you away from his Lord? What has deceived you away from your Lord who is the most gracious? Now again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so mercifully calling out to us 
so mercifully um, inviting us towards his mercy, towards his God. And we are those those sinners that have turned away from his God, that day and night we are engrossed in disobedience to Allah and his Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not um, address us with anger or does not address us with reprimanding, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us with such mercy and he says, O oh, insan who has turned away, what has turned you away from your merciful Rabb? Come back to your merciful Rabb. And you know, this this alone should make us cry in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we realize that we are so ungrateful in the court of Allah and yet he still showers so much of mercy. He still addresses us in the Holy Quran with such mercy and calls us towards his court. And we shouldn't be needing to get called to his court. We should know what our duty is. A slave needs to know what his duty is in the court of his master. But here our master is so merciful that he is constantly calling out to us, oh, insan that has turned away, come back to your merciful Rabb. You know, if you if you see anywhere in the world, any mujrim, any criminal that is guilty of um, uh, doing some wrong action, whether it is the police that are chasing him, whether it is the ustad that is chasing a naughty student, you will always find that the person that is going to try and catch the the, the mujrim, the one that is a criminal, the one who is guilty of something, they don't call that uh, that person with love. They don't call that person with mercy. But when they, they they try and catch him, and eventually when they do catch him, they treat that person with harshness and strictness. Why? Because this is how it actually works when when it, when someone you know uh, reprimands or somebody um, apprehends uh, someone that is a mujrim. But this is the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, that here day and night we are mujrims in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Day and night we are guilty of transgressing the laws of Sharia, transgressing the commandments of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so mercifully and so lovingly addresses us and says, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma harraka bi rabbikal kareem. O insan, what has turned you away? What has deceived you away from your Lord? who is most gracious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is inviting us back to his court. Now, what we need to understand is whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us or not, it is our duty to turn to him. And we need to understand how do we present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the way in which a servant, in which a slave is supposed to come in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something, again, we learn from the Holy Quran. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُمُ الرَّسُولَ لَوْ وَجَدُوا اللَّهَ التَّوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, He shows us how we need to come in the court of Allah how we need to present ourselves in the court of Allah when we want to seek his forgiveness. And this is our duty as a slave. This is our duty to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to prostrate in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to cry in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of those things that day and night we transgress his commandments. We transgress the commandments of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It is our duty not to wait for the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to constantly be in that state where we turn to him and according to the commandment in the Holy Quran, where we present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse says, and if when they have wronged themselves, when they have wronged their own souls, they come to you, O beloved Prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated the first condition. When they have wronged themselves, they must come to you, O beloved. So the first the first condition of coming in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to come to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The second condition from the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Fastaghfarullah. Once you're in the court of Allah, once you're in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, then seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, look how beautiful this is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that if you want the forgiveness of Allah, if you want the forgiveness of your Rabb, 
then go to the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. And then he says, when you're in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, then seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this teaches us that when we turn to the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, we are indeed in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you come in the court firstly in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. The second condition is seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the third condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُمُ rasul And Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam must intercede on your behalf. So if you want forgiveness of Allah, if you want to present ourselves in his court, then we need to turn to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam in his court, we need to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to ask Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala islam to intercede on our behalf. These are the three conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated in the Holy Quran when we want to present ourselves in his court to seek forgiveness. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Lawajadu Allah tawwab ar rahima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then you will certainly find Allah as the most acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. Now remember, whether Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, hypothetically speaking, exists or does not exist, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still tawwab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still rahim, he is still the most merciful, he is still the most relenting, he is still the one who most, the most, the one who most accepts repentance, irrespective of any other creation that exists or does not exist, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of anyone or anything. But yet, even though he is most merciful, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, follow these conditions and he says, Then you will certainly find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that if you want the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the tariqah, this is the road, this is the pathway that you need to follow in order to get that forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the commandments that he has laid down, that this is the procedure that needs to be followed if you want the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you know, it, it's like just an analogy without comparison for us to understand. You know, when you have a beggar, a beggar comes to a king and he is begging for something from the king. Now, if the beggar wants wants to receive something from the king, he has to enter the doorway of the king's house or the king's palace in order to ask for something, in order to receive something. The beggar cannot expect to go onto the roof of the house or the palace of the king and think that now he is at the highest point and that he will receive something. He won't receive anything because that is not the procedure, that is not the etiquette of the court of the king to go onto his roof and then ask him for something. The etiquette is to go to the doorstep of the king and then ask him and then you will receive something from the king. So analogy without comparison for us to understand. So Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he is the doorway to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the essence of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want the mercy and the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we need to follow that doorway. We need to come to that doorstep and then we will attain the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful, he is most relenting, and then you will find how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers us with his mercy. And again, this is from the Holy Quran, this is what our Rabb himself has stipulated of how we need to present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we want to seek forgiveness. So this is for us to understand how we need to present ourselves when we want to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially during this month, especially with the Shabai Barat uh, around the corner, this is something that we need to keep in mind so that when this night of forgiveness, this night of absolution comes, then we can take advantage of this night and follow the commandments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us of how to seek his forgiveness, how to present ourselves in his court, and inshallah then we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of our sins. So this is for something for us to remind ourselves of what is our duty in this dunya. You know, when we look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is often our problem in this day and age, is that we, be, we have become so engrossed in our dunya, we don't have time to reflect, even on simple things. Many of us, and in fact most of us, if not all of us, 
know about the significance of forgiveness. Many of us know about the, the hadith of, of uh, the Shabi Barat and, and Allah subhanahu revealing his special divine revelation onto the first heaven, etc. But many of us fail to reflect on what this actually means. Many of us fail to reflect on our own shortcomings in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we often go around, you know, thinking to ourselves, we're better than this person, I'm better than that person. The moment a person thinks that he is better than the next person, he is worse than that person. Irrespective of what deeds that person has, irrespective of how much sin that person is engrossed in, but the moment you think yourself to be superior, think yourself to be even slightly better than the next person, whether it is with regard to reading namaz, whether it is with regard to reading the Holy Quran, or any aspect, knowledge, whatever good you can think of, the moment Very a person point. thinks... The moment a person thinks that I am better than the next person, he is worse than that person. Because this is yeah. Riyadh, this is yeah. ostentation, this is pride. The moment a person has pride on his own deeds, all of his deeds become null and void. And the way to reverse that, all of those deeds becoming null and void, is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in forgiveness and turn in repentance in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refrain from thinking others being less than yourself. A person must always have the view, irrespective of how wretched the people around him might be, whether they are open sinners, whether they are engrossed in the worst of sins or not. A person must always believe that I am the worst person. There is no one more sinful than me. This is the belief that each person must have, and each person must have the belief that I do not have any good deeds in my Nama Amal. Why? Because we don't have any guarantee of any of the, the Amal that we do the deeds that we do. There's no guarantee of our namaz. There's no guarantee of our hajj. There's no guarantee of our recitation of the Holy Quran. There's no guarantee of any of our deeds. And even if there was any deeds that were accepted, then because of our own pride and ostentation and that thinking, that, that way of thinking that we have that I am better than this person, then even the deeds that we would have had, even that becomes wasted. So this is the mindset that we need to have that whatever I am doing, it is from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not better than that person. The only difference is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with the tawfiq of doing these deeds and has not blessed that person. So in, instead of judging the next person and thinking that this person is like this, this person is like that, we should actually make dua, oh Allah, the way you have granted me tawfiq to do this, grant that person also to, grant that person the tawfiq also to do the same. And grant him forgiveness for whatever guna he is doing. This should be our mindset. So our mindset should always be focused on forgiveness, both for ourselves and for the people around us. And when we have this kind of a mindset, then we will find that when we present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will find the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embracing us. Why? Because we are coming with a clean heart in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person cannot come in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with a heart filled with dirt, a heart filled with filth, a heart full with judging other people, a heart full with pride and thinking that that person is going to achieve and attain the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to have humility in the court. The most important thing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have humility. And this is something we need to inculcate in ourselves. Come in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah ta'ala has told us in the Holy Quran, He has commanded us by presenting ourselves in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and come with utmost humility, crying in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now a person might ask, but all of us don't have the capability and the means to present ourselves in Madinatul Munawwara. Remember the Holy Quran did not say that you must go to Madinatul Munawwara. The Holy Quran said that we must present ourselves in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And Huzur alayhi salam, he is present wherever the believer thinks of him, he is present there. And if you want to if you want to present yourself in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, then you need to close your eyes and make the sawr that you are in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Make the sawr that you are standing in front of the Jali Mubarak of Huzur alayhi salam. And this, this in itself is presenting yourself in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So the condition is not to physically be standing in Madinatul Munawwara. The condition is to present yourself in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And this is how if a person does not have the ability to physically be in Madinat al Munawwara, you have to make the sawr that you are standing in the court of Huzur al-Islam and then you seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and then you ask Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam, you make a request and plead to him that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam, please intercede on my behalf and also get my sins forgiven. I make toba from all of my sins. I am seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please, you as the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, intercede on my behalf. So this is the manner in which we need to present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is with regard to our lives in this dunya. But this is something that needs to remind us about our hereafter. This is something that needs to remind us of our hereafter. And this is where I mentioned that we, in our daily lives that has become so engrossed in the dunya, we have failed to reflect on certain points that are absolutely key. And one of them is to reflect on the hereafter. And this is why we tend to be engrossed in so much of sin because we have gone far away from reflecting on what is going to happen on the day of judgment. We forget what we will be facing on the day of judgment. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam has mentioned that on the day of judgment, a person will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be commanded to read out his deeds, his book of deeds. And this is Huzur alayhi salam mentioning this. And this hadith, you know, when a person hears this hadith, this alone should make us cry thinking, what if we are this person? And this, when you just think of that, that alone should make you stop committing guna, thinking that no one can see me here. I can, especially our youngsters with our cell phones and our uh, uh, social media, etc. You know, the youngsters think that if they are sitting in their rooms or sitting somewhere that nobody can see them, they can do whatever they want on their phones, look at haram things, listen to haram things, and no one can see them. But they fail to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam is aware of all of your deeds. And all of those sins, they hurt Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa And on the day of judgment, we will need to expose all of those sins in front of everyone. If we do not seek forgiveness, if you don't repent sincerely in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person dies without repenting, without seeking forgiveness, then all of those deeds will be in his nama amal. And he might be one of those people that are asked on the day of judgment, that are commanded to read out those deeds. So Huzur al-Islam mentions that this person will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be commanded, read out what is in your book of deeds. And this person, when he opens his book of deeds, he will see guna upon guna upon guna. And imagine this is the maidan of Mahshar. He is before his Rabb and now he has to read out all of his sins. Put yourself in that shoe and think to yourself, day and night we commit guna, how will we face our Rabb on that day? How will we present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day if we are asked to read out our sins? And Huzul al-Islam mentions that this person will start reading out his sins and he'll read out the small sins and he'll skip all of the big sins. Even they, this is the fitrat of insan, that even they, he will be so ashamed that he will not even have the courage to read out the big guna that he had committed in the dunya. And he will start to commit, he will start to uh, skip all of those big sins and he will only read out all of the small sins that he had in his entire book of deeds all of the small sins he will read and he will skip out all of the big sins but at that point in time this is that person who in the dunya he had sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy would have forgiven this person and Huzur al-Islam mentions after this person com would, will complete reciting or reading out all of his bad deeds, all of the small ones and skipping all of the big ones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention to the angels everything that he has read, all of the sins that he has read out, through my mercy I have converted all of it to good deeds. Subhanallah. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person repents in his court, when a person seeks the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erase our sins, but those mountains of sins that we had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converts those mountains of sins into mountains of good deeds. This is the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this announcement that whatever he has read out, he has converted into good deeds, then this person, then he will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, wait, I, I have left out quite a few other deeds. I haven't finished. There's lots of big guna that I haven't read out. And Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam he smiled when he narrated this incident to the Sahaba Ikram. Huzur al-Islam smiled until his Mubarak teeth became visible. 
And this was for Huzul Islam to show us how important it is for us to present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek forgiveness in this dunya before we have to account and present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment in, in front of the entire mankind. Imagine today, we even in front of our families, in front of our friends, we don't have the courage to tell them what guna we are involved in, what guna we commit day and night. Why we think, no, nobody can see what I'm doing, I'll do what I want to do. But we fail to realize that on the day of judgment, you will not be able to hide anywhere. You will have to, everything that we have done will be exposed in front of everyone. This is why it is so important for us to seek forgiveness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to repent. And inshallah, through that repentance, through that seeking forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will convert all of those guna and convert that into good deeds, inshallah. So this is why it is important for us to reflect. Firstly, to reflect that we need to present ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his forgiveness, to repent in his court the way he has commanded us in the Holy Quran. The second thing is that we need to seek forgiveness and be sincere in that forgiveness and be humble in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness before we enter the Maidan of Mahshar where everything will be opened up in front of everyone and we need to remind ourselves and cry in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh you who is Sattar, oh you who is the one who conceals the faults, who conceals the sins on that Maidan of Mahshar when everyone will be present, do not disgrace me on that Maidan. Oh Allah, in this dunya, forgive me for whatever I have done. I repent from all of my sins. Make it a habit every day to repent, every day to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, especially our youth, they don't realize that they have such a good fortune and, and good and glad tidings from Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that in a youth, when a person is in the youth and they seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes so happy with that person, becomes so pleased with that person that is beyond our imagination. And Huzur al-Islam himself mentioned, Ana Habibullah, I am the beloved of Allah. And then he said, Ashabu Ta'ibu Habibullah, the one who repents while he is in his youth, he is also the beloved of Allah. Subhanallah. Obviously, the, us being a beloved of Allah when we repent in the court of Allah subhanahu ta'ala in our youth does not equate ourselves to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala So a person must not listen to this and think that we will become like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the Habib of all Habibs. But Huzul islam mentioned this to make us understand how beloved a person becomes when in his youth, when, you know, when he has the jazba to commit guna, but in that state, he suppresses his nafs and he repents in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes so pleased with him that he becomes a beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that we need to inculcate in ourselves as, as the elders and also inculcate this in our children, inculcate this in our youth. It is our duty as the elders to teach our youth these things that day and night we all we just give them all of these means, the, the games and, and the cell phones and the, the uh, tablets and laptops, etc. And we just give them freedom to commit guna, but we don't we don't censor them, we don't speak to them about these things, we don't help them understand what is guna, what is not guna, we don't help them understand if for some reason guna has taken place, the way to repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to be sincere in that and how to stay away from those sins. As Allah as Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala sallam mentioned, Attaibu bin Zambi Kamalla Zambalahu. Huzul Islam mentioned that the one who seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who repents in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if he had never committed a sin in the first place. Subhanallah. Look at how merciful our Rabb is. He is that Rabb that is willing to erase all of our guna and convert it into good deeds. He is that Rabb who is calling out to us when he does not need, he is not required to call out to us. He is our master. We are the slaves. But this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that constantly calls out to us. Let us not be uh, uh, negligent in this before our last breath uh, passes. Let us turn to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us seek forgiveness. Let us repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq and the hidayat to repent, to stay away from guna, to seek, constantly seek forgiveness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa grant all of us death with iman. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah hadhi wa lakum ilisari al-mu'mina wal-mu'minat. Innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah.
Just like the Adon Fabi Ayala Rubikuma to Kadiban, which favors of Allah will be denied. And as Mulana speaks, there's topics upon topics upon topics and lessons to be learned from what Mulana has got to say here. And inshallah, with this classes that we have on a Wednesday night, we obviously planning a lot of these topics to be covered. And now the month of Ramadan is the time to come with to, to be a bit more practical. So we will be having a few practicals done during this month. So there's two more sure. classes before Ramadan comes. The, the week before Ramadan, just for everybody's information, we will be having again uh, our lesson with the dietitian Iman to teach us and prepare us for the month of Ramadan. So please try to avail yourselves. Jazakallah to Molana. Jazakallah to the participants okay. for joining tonight's session. May Allah protect, guide us all and assist the people Amen. of Palestine, free the people Amen. of Palestine. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alibi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.